Hey math students, let's talk about geometric sequences today, shall we? So the last type of sequence we talked about were arithmetic sequences. And if you remember, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence that uh, you start with your first term and then you add something. And to go from term to term to term, you always add the same amount. And if you remember, you can come up with uh, a... Uh, an explicit way of defining that, uh, defining the nth term of a sequence like that by saying a sub n is going to be a sub 1 times n, n minus 1. Sorry, let me start over. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, where d is that difference between each term. Okay? Today we're looking at geometric sequences, and geometric se sequences are very, very different from arithmetic sequences, but have some, uh, but have some, some characteristics that are very, very similar to arithmetic sequences. So let me just cut to the chase. An arithmetic sequence is to a linear function what a geometric sequence is to an exponential function. Okay, and that tells you a lot about what you need to know about geometric sequences already. But let me just give you some, uh, uh, some examples here. These are all geometric sequences. And I can tell they're geometric sequences. Let's look at the first one. 2, 6, 18, 54, 162, etc. I can tell this is a geometric sequence because to go from 2 to 6, I'm multiplying times 3. And to go from 6 to 18, I'm multiplying times 3. And to go from 18 to 54, I am multiplying times 3. And 54 to 162, I am multiplied times 3. So what I end up with is uh, a sequence that is pretty much defined by two numbers. The 2, so your first term, and this, uh, this multiplier that we generally refer to as R because it's the ratio between terms. Okay, You can always find R by saying... What's 18 divided by 6, or 54 divided by 18, or 162 divided by 54? Okay? So, two different ways to uh, uh, describe this first sequence here. One is uh, recursively, and that is we'd say, well, a n would be r times a n minus 1. That's a good way to define it. And, and actually, here, let's... Uh, Let's not say r, let's say 3 times a n minus 1. We already know what it is. And of course, we have to define what the first term is. So a 1 is 2. So that is a perfectly fine uh, description of this uh, sequence. Or we can, uh, we can define it explicitly. And we can say, well, it's going to be a sub n is going to be 2 times... And let's just look at, a, uh, at an example. 54, for example. 54, which is the fourth term, is 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. So 2 times 3 to the third. 18, the third term, is 2 times 3 times 3. That's 2 times 3 squared. And so you can see that any term on here is going to be 2 times 3 to the n minus 1th power. So... 2 times 3 to the n minus 1. That is the explicit way of defining this sequence. Let's go to the next one. 4, negative 4, 4, negative 4, 4. That's weird. Okay, it's just bouncing back and forth from 4 to negative 4. Well, this is a geometric sequence because 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 times negative 1 is 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 etc 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 so one way to define this would be recursively and say a1 is 4 and a uh, n is going to be negative a n minus 1 that works okay for all n greater than or equal to 2 or you define it explicitly and you say, well, let's see. The third term here is 4 times negative 1 times negative 1. That's 4 times negative 1 to the second power. So again, this is going to be that r to the n minus 1 power. 
So this is going to be a n equals 4 times negative 1 to the n minus 1 power. And so again, we have two perfectly acceptable ways of defining this sequence, either recursively or explicitly. As it turns out, the explicit way of defining the nth term of this sequence is always going to be a n equals uh, a1 times r to the n minus 1. And that, that's, that's a thing worth knowing, okay? If you're ever looking for the nth term of a geometric sequence, that is exactly how you will find it. That's the explicit way of, uh, of defining that sequence. Okay, and uh, so moving on here, let's see, 3 times what would be negative 6? That would be negative 2, right? So this uh, sequence here would be uh, a sub n equals 3 times negative 2 to the n minus 1. 12.8 to 19.2 to 28.8 to 43.2. Uh, this is one where I might actually want to uh, grab my handy dandy calculator and say, what is 19.2 divided by 12.8? Oh, it's 1.5. Okay. Now if I multiply uh, 19.2 times 1.5, I get, oops, try that again. 19.2 times 1.5, I get 28.8. If I do it again, I get 43.2. So yes, indeed, each time I'm going to start with 12.8. And if I keep multiplying times 1.5, I keep getting the next uh, term in the sequence. So that means this is a n equals 12.8 times 1.5 to the n minus 1 power. And finally, this last one here, again, we're going positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So this means R, our, our ratio, is going to be a negative number. And so let me just see, what is 19.2 divided by 25.6? And I'm getting negative 0.75 or negative 3 fourths. So this would be A sub N equals 25.6 times negative 0.75 to the N minus 1 power. Okay? Use the same formula each time. Uh, so, uh, so let's see. What would I do if I had, if I knew two terms of the sequence, but they're not necessarily consecutive? What would I do then? For example, let's say I know that A2 is uh, 24.5. And A5 is 67.228. What am I going to do then? So basically what this is telling me is I have something for A1, then 24.5, then something for A3, then something for A4, and then 67.228. How would I find A1? How would I find R? Well... Think about it. You're multiplying times r to get here, and then times r again to get here, and then times r again to get here. So what that tells me is 24.5 times r cubed is 67.228. Oh, okay. Well, let me just uh, divide 67.228 by 24.5. And I'm going to get 2.744. So that tells me that r cubed is 2.744. So how do I find what r is? Simple. Take the cube root, or the one-third power, of both sides. So let me take 2.744 to the one-third power, and I get oh, 1.4. Okay, so 24.5, if I multiply that times 1.4, I get 34.3. And if I multiply times 1.4 again, I get 48.02. And 
And if I multiply that times 1.4 again, I get 67.228. So yeah, that works. Now to go back to A1, I'm going to have to divide by 1.4, right? So if I take my 24.5 and divide by 1.4, I get 17.5. So what is AN? AN is 17.5 times 1.4 to the N minus 1. And that is how we get our explicit form of that sequence. Okay. Uh, next video is going to be over geometric series. Okay. But I hope this has helped. I hope this has given you a nice little uh, 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 introduction to geometric sequences. And really the, the main thing to take away from, uh, uh, from this video is that right there. Okay. The fact that for a geometric sequence, AN is going to be A1 times R to the N minus 1. If you can come away with that, you've done well. Okay? See ya. Till next time.